μπάλα ξεκίνεται στο κήπεδο, πλησιάζει την περιοχή και... Κατέβασε και εσύ το Beton Alpha app και μη χάσεις ούτε ένα γκολ. Beton Alpha. Ανεβήκαμε κατηγορία. Edo, welcome to another edition of No Chofters, powered by Bet on Alpha. And boys and girls, or whatever you um, identify yourself as, I don't know whether I should use boys and girls anymore, I keep saying this, but um, we got away with one tonight, didn't we? You know when you really, really need to go for a piss or a shit, and you're holding it, and you're holding it, and you're touching cloth, and you finally get to the toilet? Yeah, that 96th minute, 97th minute was the toilet. Um, yeah, anyway, Roy, how you doing, mate? I'm good, man. I'm good. Um, happy for the win uh, today, even though it was a stressful win. But, you know, when you want to build a, an unbeaten run, there's going to be times where you're going to have to win, sometimes ugly, sometimes you scrape victories, sometimes it's professional, sometimes it comes with stress. I think um, it was a very important game. I think after a long time, we, we, we played with a little bit more stress than normal as well. Uh, against a, a solid team, a compact team, we normally have difficult games against Dial. They're a team that uh, have a really good manager tactically. Uh, they're a compact team. They don't concede goals easily. And I think uh, because we, we try to play for us to do that, but we'll talk more about it um, but overall a very important win because you know th there has been improvement the last few weeks and uh, even if we drop points, it would be unfair to say that we haven't improved because we have, but you need the three points, which is the most important thing in every game. Uh, after last night's result, when Aris lost against Dyke, it was an opportunity to psychologically, you know, go to top four, even though we're, we're fifth on goal difference with Aris, but still psychologically, you, you know, you're getting closer. It would have been even better if it was a draw last night, because you would also break the double digit barrier from the top teams but still you know another victory another clean sheet no one said it was going to be easy today but at the end of the day we got the three points i'm not saying that everything is good but at the end of the day um, i don't think it was unfair that we won the game i'm going to put some things into perspective first of all as you quite rightly said the pitch didn't do anyone any favours through the middle it was very difficult to to play the ball it was often getting stuck we had to put the ball out wide quite a bit second half we put a lot of diagonal balls in the channels in wide areas got no problem with that um but we need to bear in mind we played against a team that is in good form at the moment six clean sheets in a row they got past um their rivals in the cup the other day albeit on penalties but again this is a team under Jan Nevsky. They're very solid, very compact, very focused. They're probably, them and Abuo, I'd say, are the most organised teams in the league. And obviously, the, the, the amount of goals that they conceded reflects that. So they weren't going to be pushovers. All right. I had the feeling they were going to come to us and hope to hit us on a counter-attack. They've got a fantastic player, Miralas, who I think is too good for, for Cyprus. Chibola, again, too good for Cyprus. Uh, and I'm not going to lie to you, I'm glad to see the back of that Santos because every time he's played against us, he always gives us trouble on that right-hand side and as a fullback. And to be honest, he wasn't... I think when we made the tactical switch, which we're obviously we're going to discuss in a bit, he became very, very isolated, didn't really get much opportunity going forward. So again, I think that's credit to the manager. And um, while I'm speaking about the manager, Roy, um, I said give the guy time. I said I'm going to be patient. And I think slowly, slowly, he's, I'm, I'm warming to him even more. I think he's very brave in his decision-making, especially with the substitutions. 
I think he's very brave in what he does in terms of the attacking prowess. We're seeing players playing in various positions. Today was very, I wouldn't say static, but the players knew their roles and we didn't see any drifting, if that makes sense. We didn't see Gidsaw moving into central midfield as we saw in previous matches, which I think is probably because he was worried about the outlet on their right-hand side, our left. To be honest, I can't complain about the performance overall. Okay, there was one or two instances where Lang fucked up a couple of times. Um, there was the point where he tried to control the ball and he knocked it with his knee and gave them an opportunity. And then at the end, when Teixeira almost scored, the ball watching. But listen, the way I see it, a win is a win. you got to win ugly sometimes. And it's another victory. It's another clean sheet. We move up the table. So more positives than negatives. And I said this year, I'm going to be more positive. So, wallahi, yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Um, at the moment, like I said in the introduction, we what's ideally you want to see the improvement and you want to see the results coming in. Uh, we we are seeing improvement and the results are coming in. But as I said, mm -hmm. you can't um, dominate every game and uh, be equally good in, in in all in all games. Obviously, the it was an important game for El as well. Like you said, uh, not only did they uh, go through in the cup uh, midweek against Apollon in a hard fought game of 120 minutes, they gave a lot of energy. Before that, they they won up well. So, just the psychology coming to RCB after those big two results, you know, uh, makes up for maybe the uh, the, the lack of um, physical condition or, or how tired they were when you know sometimes you get that extra push just by the results and as you very rightly said they're organized the the compact they're very good defensively they've got some good quality players um they're waiting for moments to they're, they're patient with the ball you know and waiting for for their opportunities they did have the opportunities to to get an equalizer but at the same time we also missed a few chances um the referee was quite good as well, even though there was uh, that, that penalty uh, towards the the end of uh, the game with Kagu, which uh, in in real play I thought it was a penalty. Even when I saw the um, the replay, I thought it was a penalty. Even though you, you said that he tried to win it more than anything, that's never a pen. That is never that is never a penalty, right? And I tell you, I tell you first of all, I knew. I knew that he, I wouldn't say he took a dive. What he did, he he tried to win the penalty. You know, the goalkeeper's got about to challenge him. He was actually going down before the goalkeeper made any contact with him. And in fact, Gabu left his right foot in. It's learning the dark arts. Okay, this is the dark arts of football when, you know, different VAR official may have given it. But I personally, if I was an Isle fan, I'd have been pissed off in all fairness. But look, it goes back to what I said about Gugel getting in the right positions and making these opportunities for himself. So while you've got to be a bit like, come on, bruv, like you, you, you can't be doing that shit because you've got a yellow card. And yeah. when the yellow cards start mounting up, then so that's when the suspensions come and whatever. But listen, he's getting in the position. So anyway. Effie, I think nine, nine out of 10 players would have done that. But the reason I insisted a little, a little bit that it was a penalty is because he 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 played the ball first, and the way the keeper fell, the keeper, you know, couldn't avoid avoid the contact. So, it, for me, it was maybe a careless play from the keeper. Okay, I can understand how Gabu tried to win it as well, but even if he didn't, the keeper would have contacted him. You know, he wouldn't he would have. have. He wouldn't have. You don't he, think I'm so. telling you, you wouldn't have. No, no, no. Shall I tell you why? Because, as I said, Gagu left his right foot in and it was the right foot that the goalkeeper clipped, uh, clipped right? Okay. But Gagu was already going down before the goalkeeper made contact with him, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. When you watch it again, I'm telling you. I'm maybe, telling you, maybe whatever, I have to watch listen, it again. And Duxy, listen, it is what it is, man. We, got a lot, we can laugh about it now. I mean, look, let, let's break it down a little bit here because... It was one of those games where you just knew that it needed a goal for it to spark into life. It was very cagey at the beginning. As I said before, because of the pitch, 
both sides couldn't really play the ball well. There's some points where Milicic and Lang were playing the ball uh, to each other and the ball was getting stuck in the turf. I'm like, do you know what? This is very dangerous because you know how loose passes can fuck you up. I mean, that is the loosest of loosest passes you can make. Um, and I was actually worried that even a back pass might get stuck in the turf. But do you know what? It, ha- it is what it is. But the goal came from a flick on by Cuddy. Curry. And that was vital, absolutely vital. Because as I said earlier, we're putting the ball into channels because of the pitch. There's no way we could pass through them. We had yeah. to get that ball over the top. And what I liked, the fact that Guggle gambled and he ran onto it. Mm-hmm. He ran onto the flick and he did the work there. It was, it was fantastic play from him. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, well, hang about it was... Yeah, but it was, it was, it was, no, hang on, but it was Karim that flicked it on, wasn't it? Yeah. It was Milicic that, that pumped it and and, and uh, he flicked it on and then Gagel put the ball in the box. Now, f- that's a great pass from Gagel into the box because it's exactly what they want you to do. Put it across the six-yard box. If anyone yeah. runs in on it, it can either take a deflection, might c- come back out, the goalkeeper might, might fumble it. And Muriel, who's been brilliant all season for him, made that mistake, went straight to Bruno, 1-0. Um, again, I'm not complaining. It's, it's a scrappy goal to score, but listen, it ended up in the back of the net. And again, you got to give Gagul the credit for gambling onto that run. You've got to give Karim the credit for the flick on for anticipating Gagul's run because he wouldn't have flicked it on if he didn't think that Gagul was going to run onto it. So you got to give Karim his props for that, give him his flowers. And again, even Bruno, who I've been shitting on most of this season, right place, right time. And I'm here then. Happy days. Yeah. Before we talk, okay, obviously spoke about the goal, but what do you make of the starting eleven? Were there any surprises for you there? No, there weren't any surprises because they say never change a winning team. That was the same lineup as last time, wasn't it? Yeah, but uh, you know, uh, Yannick said that uh, he's not of that philosophy. That just because a team wins, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to play the same team. Uh, yeah, bro, I, I, I get what you're saying, but sometimes you can't take what managers say and, and keep, keep it as gospel because when you say that, if you, if you say, oh, I'm going to keep the same lineup, obviously the op- the opponents are going to switch their style. To, but, do you know what I mean? So I can't, I can't really, uh, yeah, anyway, anyway. Yeah, okay. In all honesty, I, I expected the team at least 10 out of 11 to be the same. Uh, it was a, a bit of a question mark um, if Kusu was going to start for Kasama because um, Kusu is a bit more direct um, in the middle of the park. And I thought that, you know, him staying out last uh, game because he was suspended, I thought that maybe he would have uh, started the game with him. Obviously, he's, he's got more engine, uh, more energy uh, than Kasama and, and he can also help the, uh, as when we're going up from you, you remember the last few games when he gave uh, through balls from the back or like in set pieces, he pushes up or he tries to take shots from outside the box. So I thought that tactically, maybe using Kusu, he doesn't like Urasi Barabano Dinael because he, he, he runs more. But uh, saying that, I think uh, Kasama was a man of the match for me. He had a really good game. Uh, the whole... Um, not 90 minutes, uh, 86, 87, because he, he got subbed at the towards the end of the game. But I think Kasama had a really good game. Uh, the rest of the positions was um, no surprises. The, the back five, Francis and the back four, um, again, the same. Paris and uh, Fortis, Kitsos, uh, Lang and Mille, uh, Kasama and Bash in, in the middle, Bruno, Parker, uh, Karim and uh, and Kagu. Uh, we were exchanging messages, and uh, you said very early in the game that uh, Kitsos was going to have uh, some problems with uh, with uh, with uh, Bruno Santos. And uh, it, it was uncle... after the first attack. It was yeah. after the first attack, and I, I thought, you know what? They're going to target the kid. They're going to yeah. target him because they know that Bruno, our Bruno, doesn't do enough defensively. They they knew it. So it was target the kid, get the ball down that right-hand side, 
Macri weren't going to do too much. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about that guy. I don't really like him to be... I don't know him personally, but uh, anyway, whatever. So I, I think they knew that Bruno Santos was more of a threat for us on our left-hand side. So anyway. Yeah, but uh, my, my answer was uh, that uh, I think this is a game that is a good opportunity for, for Jan to, to come back. He, he, he matches his physicality as well. And as we saw in the second half when, when uh, Jan uh, came on, uh, he, you, know, it's, it's, you know how it is. It's like a, a bully in the neighborhood that makes fun of like a little kid. He's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call my, my cousin and he's going to come and we'll see what you're going to do. And he's like, OK. But even even he gave it. He, he got stuck in at moments, you know, in the especially the second half. He tried, and I was sure that you know as the game grew, he was going to grow into the game as well. But okay, uh, I I don't have any any complaints from Kitsos, but it was good to see Jan as well. Nam ben isto bechlin je na prospati na je na bezigala. Yeah. Um, yeah. The first half. Um, let's break it down. I think we saw two different um, halves. Like Toporo and Nichrono, there were both teams were a bit more more cautious. Obviously, the pitch didn't help. Uh, I, I also thought that the goal we scored was really really important. It was always going to be a game of one two goals the most. But, you know, obviously the team that scored first was going to have a, a very big advantage. Um, and I'm not going to say it was lucky we worked for the goal, but it was it was a poor goal to concede. If, if you know, for a team such as IL with, with a very good defence, I, I, I think it was a, a poor goal to, for them to concede. They'll be gutted the way they conceded the goal, the, the defensive errors there, both from the keeper and the defender, I think, not just... Uh, the keeper, but uh, it was World Cup. <laughs> uh, right after that, we scored that goal, which was offside as well. Kagu scored mm -hmm. the goal. But okay. Great we, finish. We, we, great finish. Yeah, <laughs> finish. But okay, but it was an offside. Yeah. I, I don't remember I'll threatening us um, in the first half. I think the first half... Uh, ended Sis, with... Sis had a shot. Sis had a shot. Uh, with, they had a corner... And Cass came off the, the the post, and Sis kind of like half volleyed it out for a yeah uh, yeah. But I it was going to go for a throw into Bunis. Yeah, and ne eh, idan je no mizu de josen do proi from me triste li kezi amas je mianti sael some like that. But the second half was a different game, I think, uh, because I had to had to attack. You know, they're playing one of the. Last cars trying to get into the top six as well. So it wasn't as if, you know, IL didn't want to get something off the game. You know, you could see that they they tried. They also had another two injuries to add to the nine that they already had. Yeah. Uh, and, and their keeper as well. So it wasn't very easy for them. They didn't have the luxury of the options from the bench to change a lot of things. But... They were brave. I, th I think IL deserves uh, congratulations for the for their game. They were, bro. They were with, team. with teams with teams like IL, right? As I was saying on on this is Mappa with Thasso, yeah. they remind me of Burnley. This okay. this IL teams remind me of Burnley, right? Sean Dyche. You got Janewski, okay. like Janewski is the, the Macedonian Sean Dyche. Yeah, they've got a very solid organized team. But they've got two or three star players that make the difference. You've got the goalkeeper who has kept thousands of clean sheets this season, or so it seems. You got Chibola, who is a baller. He's too good for that team. And Miralas. Okay. Now, I think we worked the system absolutely perfect. Bash was on Chibola every time Chibola got the ball, especially in the deep lying midfield position. Bash would be on him. Bash would be on him every time. Every time he'd be on him. Okay. Um, and Miralas, he's got this free role. So you'd see him at left back. You'd see him centre mid. You'd see him right wing. He wasn't in one position. So it was very difficult to, to pick him up. So what do you do? Do you stick a man on him and lose a man? Because by going 1v1 on him the whole time, they've got a spare man. 
So what do you do? We worked the system well. There were some occasions where he had too much time on the ball, which made me feel very, very uncomfortable, and especially in the last 20 minutes where he got the ball out 25, 30 metres out, and everyone backed off him. I'm like, close him down. He's going to smash it. And fortunately, Francis made the save. So I think tactically, we got it spot on, especially uh, second half when they had that opportunity when Bruno Santos broke through. He brushed off our Bruno as if he didn't exist, hit the post, and then she bowled him. No, he, he hit off uh, Lang, I think. Lang got, got the challenge there, and it. Ch- no. We've got a guy. They hit the post and came out to Chibola and they put it over the bar. Yeah. So that was the, yeah. that was the warning sign. Yeah. And that's when we made the change. That's when Lesiex came on to give that protection on that left hand side. After that, they they were they were they were inept. They had nothing there. You know, there's no point in wearing a condom because you're firing blanks. That's that's what it was for them on that right hand side. So. Again, it, it goes back to the, the tactical game of chess. And while it only says 1-0, while it shows that we didn't really... OK, there was an opportunity from Gitzo that the goalkeeper had to make the save second half. We didn't really need to create that many opportunities because we looked good defensively. That being said, there were still those individual mistakes that could have cost us. Like mm-hmm. when Cass tried to do an overhead kick and he went straight to their play and they popped it in the box and there was an opportunity. Like mm-hmm. at the end, with the ball watching, the ball over the top, standard... Standard. Yeah. You need to be dealing with it. Lang, you know, there was two, as I said, there was two mistakes. That was the second one. You can even say Lesiak's weren't tracking Teixeira, but you don't expect your left-back to be tracking a centre-back. Yeah. The centre, the central defender should have been dealing with that ball in the box. And, you know, again, as, as Lang came across as a really nice guy the other day on Total Green, don't get me wrong, and he seems like a nice guy, whatever, these mistakes cost you. And this goes back to why I keep saying, you need a left-sided central defender that can read these games. You know, there's there's many times where he cleared the ball with his left foot. Great. Again, no complaints about his overall performance. But those two big mistakes almost cost us. We need the defender that can can threaten him in that position because he's made that central defensive spot his own. And I get it. You want to have two central defenders that know each other's game. I get it. Fine. And they're, they're, they're the perfect partnership for the manager. But for me, he's not being threatened enough for that left that left-sided spot. For me, anyway. And I'm not saying he's getting complacent. I'm just saying that, you know, there's some mistakes that he makes that cost us a lot. You know, or could cost us. Again, I don't mean to be that guy. I think Lang has improved this season. Don't get me wrong. Mm. Um, but there's still some occasions where I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. And that's not because of my diet. I, I, think, I, think, I think he, know, he knows it as well. He knows it as well. I mean, when, when he came on Total Green last week, he... He even said that, thank God for VAR, that saved my ass, you know. So he understands when he does make mistakes. Yeah, but, listen, he's, 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 more, he's not the only more. one that makes mistakes. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that he's the only one that makes mistakes. It's just that it, maybe he's just unfortunate that when he makes the mistakes, it costs us. Yeah. Maybe it's just that. But I, I, I just, there's, there's something, I don't know, something maybe I'm just getting, I've got PTSD from last season. I don't know. <laughs> but... I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I haven't played the game, so I can't really speak. So, so what, what, what do you make of the victory today? Do you think this victory today uh, gives us a different dynamic uh, or a momentum? Do, do you see that this victory today can, can change things? How, how do you mean change things? Well, in terms of uh, progress or...? Generally, do you think we, could, we can look further up the table now? Or do you think uh, the fourth position is our roof for this season? Do you remember the Abolon game when we lost 2-1? And I came yeah. on briefly and I said, it's over. Yeah. Like, we, we're yeah. not going to win it. I am i haven't changed my stance on that. I don't think we are going to win the title. But, and here's the caveat, it's not mathematically impossible. Okay. Other teams have got on incredible winning runs. Why can't we do the same? I mean, how many wins in a row is it now? Four? Yeah. Four? And as I said, before the... Was it? No, it was after the Abolon game. Our next four games are winnable. We've won three out of the, uh, out of the four. Next one is Salamina. Yeah. Away. Right? Away from home. It's going to be difficult. Don't get me wrong. They got a good win in the cup. So the, the confidence is high. But again, defensively, they're not great. 
Those two central defenders have been keeping them in the league this season because they've been scoring their goals for them. All right, Eric scored the other day. I know, obviously, they've got Dolmes, they've got all other players. And I'm not saying that it's going to be easy. It's going to be difficult going to their place because their fans can be quite rowdy as well. But we've got a good record there. We owe them one, yeah. right? And as I said, long time ago, victories breathe confidence. Yeah. Four wins on the bounce. We're getting into this in, in good spirits. Fortunately, I, I don't think we've got any injury concerns going into that game. Apart from Zaha being injured, you know, um, uh, Ishmael was on the bench, which we, we didn't mention. He was on the bench today. Pedro, sorry, I haven't brought any co uh, comments up, but hey, there won't be any fans in the Salamina game, which yeah. there you go. That That's a bonus for us. So I, I don't see why we can't go on to win that one and crank up the pressure because right now, I mean, um, uh, What's the, what's the table saying now? Let me just bring it up quickly. I can't see the table. I'm having to bring up the table right in front of me. Good to have. All right. We're now fourth. We are seven points behind Buffer. We've moved up above Aris, who apparently were title challengers at the beginning of the season, right? Are we on the yeah. same points with Aris? Yeah, we're same points, but we're ahead on goal scored, I think. What was it goal difference? I don't know. No, head to head. As we drew with them. Yeah, know. we yeah we drew. Well, I've, got, I've got the table in front of me, and it shows that they we're fourth. Okay. So I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, in Duxy, we're level points with, but we are now seven points behind Buffer, right? If we beat Salamina, which I don't see, that's that's not impossible, right? Who have Buffer got at the weekend? Buffer have got Loxa. All right, okay, they're gonna they're gonna pam them, aren't they? They're gonna fucking. But then again. New head coach with Loxa, you never know. Look, if we beat Salamina, we're still going to be seven points behind Buffalo, but we've got Buffalo at home. We beat yeah. Buffalo, it's four points difference. So that's when the pressure comes. And we know what Buffalo are going to be like. They're going to be like Ayala today. Suck up the pressure, hit us on the counter-attack, but they've got better players. They've got much better players. They've got the leading goal scorer. They've got players like Valakari, Tankovic. Their fullbacks yeah. get forward. If we do our homework and we work hard, we'll beat them. As far as I'm concerned, in this game against Buffalo, if we run more than them, we beat them. Yeah. And it might not make sense to people here, right? But if you look at the running that their fullbacks do, if you look at their running that the central midfielders do, like Name and you know, Valakari, whoever, if we outrun them, we beat them. Yeah. Because this is a team that when they go a goal up, that's when they're most dangerous, when they're a goal up, because they stick everyone behind the ball and hit you on the counter-attack. But when they go a goal behind, they shit the bed. Yeah. So if we get an early goal, there's going to be problems. There's going to be problems. But again... Yeah. We still I'm have Salamina before that, so... Of yeah. course. And they ain't going to be easy. They're not going to be... They're going to be up for this one. 100%. So we can't take these things for granted, honestly. We can't. Because we've, okay. I'm sure we've gone into various games this season, and people have looked at the calendar and thought, "Ah, this is a, this, we're going to be no, one game at a time." Th that's that's how you got to do it. Do you think them lot who are top of the league are thinking, "Ah, oh, we got this one next, and then that one, and that one"? No, they're going next game, next game, next game, and that's how you build confidence, and that's how you build momentum. Anyway, so since there's a lot of messages we didn't put up, I'm gonna start reading what Ferreira said in the press conference. All right, you, you read, and I'll bring. Yeah. yeah, you can put before, before you start. Before you start, massive, yeah. massive thank you here to Mario. He's donated five euros ninety nine. Now, Mario, thank you very much. Thank you. But there's a problem. There's a problem that we have with YouTube right now, and maybe someone can help us because for some reason YouTube ain't letting us withdraw the money from the super chats. I don't know why. Now I need to send them some kind of uh, email or some shit. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I've tried about fifteen times and we're not able to, to withdraw the money. So at the bottom, there's a ticker. As you can see, episode powered by Bet on Alpha. There is a website. If you want to donate, like I said, there's no pressure. You guys don't have to donate. It would be great if you can. But if you don't, fine. Uh, you watching is enough for me, right? But if you want to help out the show, there's a link where you can donate. And that way, we can actually take the money and do stuff with it for the show. Like, do more giveaways and that kind of stuff. When it comes up, I'll tell you guys. It's at the bottom. So just keep looking. Keep looking. Come on. Quicker, quicker. Follow since on Instagram. 
since we're asking stuff from you guys, like, 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 now yeah. you've got some time to like. There's like, 120 subscribe. people, like, so I, I want to be at least 120 Buy me a like. coffee.com forward slash no chofters. There you go. Buy me a coffee.com forward slash no chofters. And that's where you can donate. Don't donate with Super Chats anymore. Don't do it because YouTube ain't letting us take our money. So fuck YouTube. Anyway, sorry, Roy. But thanks again, Mario. I'm going to try my best to get this money from the fucking Super Chat and then we'll do more giveaways with it. But for the moment, go buy me a coffee.com and then forward slash no chofters and then we'll sort it out. But we still need to do another giveaway because people ain't collecting their T-shirts. They've been printed and people ain't collecting their T-shirts. And people it's... ain't emailing me back to tell me their sizes so I can't print the T-shirts. So anyway, carry on. Δεν ήταν εύκολο να παίξουμε καλό ποδόσφαιρο με τη βροχή. Όταν η βροχή σταμάτησε, ξεκίνησε να παίζεται καλύτερο ποδόσφαιρο. Τέταρτη νίκη στη σειρά, τέταρτο clean sheet, είμαστε ακόμα ζωντανοί. Πριν δύο μήνε, πολλοί πίστευαν ότι δεν θα είμαστε καν στην πρώτη εξάδα. Είμαστε ακόμα ζωντανοί και συνεχίζουμε. Οι παίχτε έδειξαν ότι μπορούν να παλέψουν. Um, the, the next question had to do with uh, Francis Uzoho and some rumors about uh, an offer from France for 2 million. Για το δημοσίευμα στην Νιγηρία για Uzoho και την μεταγραφική ενίσχυση. Όσον αφορά τις μεταγραφές δεν έχουμε κάτι καινούριο. Για τον Uzoho είναι ένα δημοσίευμα στην Νιγηρία. Δεν ξέρω τίποτα γι' αυτό. Για τα συνεχόμενα clean sheet αυτό οφείλεται σε τρεις παράγοντες. Στο γεγονό ότι όλη η ομάδα βοηθάει στο να αμυνόμαστε σωστά. Το δεύτερο είναι ότι έχουμε ένα πολύ καλό τερματοφύλακα και ο τρίτος πράγοντας είναι η τύχη που τη χρειαζόμαστε κάποιες φορές. So, he even mentioned that we were lucky at some points. Αν μπορεί να φτάσει πιο ψηλά η ομόνια, με την προσπάθεια που κάνουμε έχουμε δικαίωμα να ονειρευόμαστε εμεί και ο κόσμο. Αν θέλει να υλοποιήσει τα όνειρά σου, θα πρέπει να δουλέψει σκληρά. Ναι, το πιστεύουμε, όμω την ίδια ώρα κρατάμε τα πόδια μα στο έδαφο. Μα περιμένει πάρα πολύ δουλειά και ένα βουνό ψηλό να ανεβούμε. Εντάξει. Αρχίζει νομίζω εκτό το ότι να μαθαίνει η ομάδα, μαθαίνει και να μιλάει λίγο πιο σωστά ο, ο προβολητή μα. Επειδή είχε και φορέ που στην αρχή είναι λένε πράγματα τα οποία ήταν λίγο ψυχολόγητα με ρωτά. Ε, αλλά ναι, no surprises there. I think uh, δείχνει ότι μαθαίνει και ο ίδιο. Ε, παραδέχεται και ότι έχει φορέ που έχουμε και κάποια από το συντήχη. Τα λοιπά, δεν νομίζω να έφκαλεν κάποια ανήθιση όσον αφορά τις μεταγραφές. Ε, όταν ένα έχει κάτι νεότερο, υπάρχουν και κάποιες ζωές του Ανδρέα, φέρετε να τις κοιάσουν και εσείνες. Γεια, yeah, κόμμα. Ναι, ε, Ανδρέας Δημητρίου. Όπως είπε και ο προπονητής, βήμα-βήμα και νίκη-νίκη βελτιώνεται η κατάστασή μας. Αρχίζει η ομάδα μας να δημιουργεί τα ισχυρά της χαρακτηριστικά, ένα δύσκολο κατάβλητο σύνολο. Γίνεται πιο ομάδα στο γήπεδο και σε φάση άμυνα και σε φάση επίθεση. Από εκεί και πέρα, στην κατάσταση που είμαστε, δεν μπορούμε να βλέπουμε κάτι περισσότερο πέρα από τον επόμενο αγώνα. Να ευχαριστήσουμε τον κόσμο που ήρθε στη βροχή σήμερα και έδωσε μεγάλη βοήθεια στην ομάδα. Η ομάδα έβγαλε στοιχεία που σίγουρα άρεσαν στον κόσμο. Ήταν μια δύσκολη περίοδο που ανάφερε ο κ. Φεραίρα. Υπήρξε μια αμφισβήτηση, παίζαμε κάθε τρει μέρε και δεν υπήρχε ο χρόνο να δουλέψει η ομάδα. Τώρα που υπάρχει χρόνο, μπαίνουν τα στοιχεία που θέλει να δώσει ο προμονητή. Έχουμε ένα βουνό να ανεβούμε, μεγάλη προσπάθεια να κάνουμε ακόμα. Είμαστε μακριά από εκεί που θέλουμε να φτάσουμε. Τώρα όμω φαίνεται ο δρόμο. Σε ερώτηση για το δημοσίευμα για Φράνση Ζωζόχο, απάντησε: Τώρα το ακούσαμε κι εμεί. Δεν ήρθε κάτι επίσημο ούτε ανεπίσημο στην ομόνια. Από εκεί και πέρα είναι γνωστή η τακτική μα στη μεταγραφική. Όταν έχουμε κάτι επίσημο, θα ανακοινώσουμε. Οπότε ναι, προ το παρόν δείχνουν να υπάρχει έτσι. Δεν ξέρω αν αν η κατάλληλη λέξη είναι ησυχία στα μεταγραφικά, επειδή μπορεί αύριο με αύριο να ανακοινώσουν παίχτη. Δεν ξέρω τι γίνεται στο τέλο, επειδή κάποιοι παίχτε, α πούμε, π.χ. όπω τον Πάρκερ, είναι το τρίτο παιχνίδι που ξεκινά και παίζει. Ο ο Μπέζο επίση που ακούστηκε ότι ήθελε να φύγει, έπιασε ένα στο λίγα λεπτά σήμερα. Πράγματι, δεν ξέρω τι γίνεται σε εκείνο το κομμάτι και πώ προχωρούμε. Τώρα, προφανώ, αν έρθει σε μια πρόταση για τον Φράνσι, εντάξει, ενώ Φάμπη και ο Παναγί. Bro, we, we knew that signing Φράνσι, that the whole plan was for Φράνσι to join us and for us to 
well, sorry, for Nigeria to get into the World Cup and then him to either feature or bump up his value. That didn't happen because obviously they didn't qualify. But he had that blinder against United. He's been brilliant for us since coming in for Fabi. And the club are getting their way slowly, slowly, in terms of what they what the, the objective was for signing him. Now, did I think it was a gamble when we signed him? Yes, I remember saying that he's, he's a liability. And I hold my hands up and say, I was wrong. Uh, 100% wrong. Um, he, he's been brilliant for us this season. This season has been top-notch. Forget Manchester in general. I, I, can't, I can't remember him dropping a clangor, being nervous, nothing. He's been brilliant for us. But he's still young for a goalkeeper. And if there's an opportunity to play in league earn and he wants to go, by all means, let him. Because, you know, careers are short, bruv. We saw he had the knee injury before he left us, right? For all he knew, that might have been it for him, you know? But now, inshallah, he's got this other opportunity and he's taken it with both hands, no pun intended. And... um. If there's an offer for two million, fine. Like, take it and let the guy go if he wants to go. That is, I mean, I don't want to see him go, but when Fabi comes back, we know that Fabi's going to be number one. Um, and I think Francis knows that, and I think that's that makes it difficult for him because in his mind, he's probably thinking, I work my ass off, I'm keeping clean sheets, but yet when the number one is ready, he's going to be number one. Yeah, but Fabi's ready. <clears throat> yeah, Fabi's ready. Fabi's ready, but, you know, maybe the Ferrara's waiting, or Yannick is waiting for the right time to put him in. The right time might be Salah. I mean, we, we don't know. No. So, again, I, I don't want Francis to go, but look, we've got to be um, realistic here. And I'm sure he's being realistic. He's probably thinking, I don't want to sit on the, ban- the bench. This might be my only opportunity to go play in, in the French League. Or So, you've got to be fair on the guy. And, you know, he hasn't He's barely put a foot wrong since it's coming back into the into the team. He's been brilliant for us. Again, like, but maybe this is just me being like this sympathetic kind of person. Where it's like if the player wants to leave and he's got an opportunity, which is probably once in a lifetime, you've got to let him go. You've got to let him go. Something I mentioned about uh, Francis on Total Green is that he had some questionable decisions in his career, even though he's young, you know. He was caught in situations where it wasn't entirely his fault, but sometimes maybe some bad advice or... Well, they are not for his situations, was, like what you're talking about. Even even La Coruña, you know, he, he, he they choose him out of, you know, hundreds of uh, players from Nigeria to go to La Coruña. Then La Coruña gets bankrupt. He comes to an orthosy. He comes back after like seven or eight games. Uh, this against Talki, I think this this guy starts Pundo swearing at him like um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Olia, he gets sent off. Then he comes to Omonia, he starts the first seven or eight games. He was amazing. He was MVP of the of up, up till that point. He gets injured, you know. Then he, he decides to to go to up well. The worst season of Upwell in years, you know, and, and him having his injury gets a few games. Last few days of uh, the transfer windows, he gets the opportunity to come back with us. We give him the time. Obviously, he knows he's going to be number two now. He gets his spot back on the national team without really playing for us. You know, at the point he got some games in the cup. And then that thing happens in the World Cup, you know, the desire against Ghana. Yeah. And then, you know, Fabi gets injured. He gets the game with United. And, and that since that day, you know, the United game helped him a lot, I think, to yeah. build his confidence. But it wasn't just a matter of confidence. You can see that uh, he's more explosive. He's faster. He's not, he's not afraid like before, you know. He covers the, his goal. He, like, he's... he's Showing glimpses of what he can do. He's got a lot of potential, Francis. His kicking has improved as well. That's what I was yeah. complaining about a few weeks ago. Yeah. Before the Abolong game, actually. His kicking needs to improve and it has done a lot. His distribution and is fantastic. What I think Francis needs... Francis is, 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 a, is a big kid. He needs to be shown love 
and he wants the stability and he wants yeah. someone to back him up. And now he's got that, you know. And everyone who watches the show knows that, you know, for, for me, Fabi is, I love Fabi. I love mm. Fabi. But it would be unfair to, to, to not give the opportunity to, to Francis. He hasn't done anything wrong to lose his spot, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. yeah. Roy, there's a, there's a comment here. Still, Ibez must grab some email. Feel it. You sent me the email at this is UK time eight forty two. Still, I won the the thing, whatever. And I replied to you at eight forty seven. Ella, mate, just need your t shirt size, and if you want it in black or white. I haven't had a response from you, bro. So I can't get you the t shirt done until you tell me your t shirt size. Tell me your t shirt size. I'll message the t shirt guy right now and tell me the color you want, black or white. And I'll. I, you know, Roy. Roy's in the WhatsApp group with the same T-shirt guy. Yeah. Come on, man! Stop breaking my balls. I know they're big. Yeah. <laughs> but... <laughs> the sledgehammer for that motherfucker. Um, yeah. Did you verify the channel still? How do I verify it? If you, Alex, if you know, better if you know how I verify it, tell me and I'll can do it because I don't I don't know how to do it honestly. Uh, will you buy some coffee then from the link? Yes, Mario, I'll buy you a coffee as well. When I come to Cyprus, I'll buy you a coffee. Thasso, Buffalo are getting nervous with some of the bigger teams. So the second phase of the league, you should see them drop off. Well, hopefully, but now they're signing. Well, apparently they're going to sign Bebe. <laughs> anyway, very valid. Andy, please tell me how I can do it. I don't know how to do it. Please, I beg. Um, there's a comment about Chris not being on, and every time he's not on, we win. So, um, yeah, maybe Chris should be banned from this podcast, eh? <laughs> DJ USB. <laughs> Bro, you did uh, the win. Hussein, wallahi, we did win and we deserved it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, you know, that's that's our opinion. And Yeah, I don't know, Gosan. Do you, do you really think? No, misses, we don't need he's Medakrafez. Being, he, he's being sarcastic. Okay. All right. I saw the, the LOL after. Sorry, my bad. My mm -hmm. bad. Um, yeah, there's a yeah, what about Bezos because he came on, no. didn't really have the chance to do too much, so I can't really judge. Him. I know he conceded a couple of free kicks on the halfway line, and I'm thinking, why are you conceding it from there because they're going to be pumping balls forward? But anyway, I'm not going to go into uh, attack Bezos mode because I'm done with that uh, chapter. What's happening with him, Roy? What's happening? Is he, is he staying? Is he going? Do you think? Well, I, I can only tell you what I think. I mean, obviously, I, I think that where there is smoke, there's fire. He, for whatever reason, he doesn't seem like he's enjoying his time here. Uh, <laughs> uh, phone jacker. No mm. money in your bank account. Anyway. But uh, yeah, I. It's it's really difficult. Is what I mentioned earlier. Even for Barker, I was I was sure that Barker was going to leave, and uh, now I was quite confident that Bezos was going to leave as well because he's the one who apparently asked for it. I mean, obviously, Omon, yeah, PC me Omon Yanik can not be doing the drama, but even Yanik said. If he's not happy and he wants to go elsewhere, we can't stop him from leaving. You know, you can't convince someone who wants to leave to stay and play for you if he's not happy. So that makes me believe that, you know, okay, I, I don't think playing him today for four or five minutes plus stoppage time, you know, shows that something has really changed. But I don't know, maybe he's waiting for... For an offer, maybe he's weighing his, um, you know, op there's a, there's a bill of yes to his options, you know, and uh, we'll see. Because let's not forget that the players who have contracts with us and uh, they want to want to at least get the amount of money that they get from us. And maybe Omonia will ask for money if, if an offer comes in, you know. So I don't know what it is. Obviously, there's also the possibility of play other players leaving, such as Francis, um, or you know, may maybe someone else as well. But okay, we're more than halfway towards the end of the 
transfer window. So whatever is going to happen has to happen quite soon, you know, whether it's players leaving or players coming in because you, you need them to be ready ASAP. We said many times that uh, transfer window of January is not similar to the one in, in the summer and that you need the players to be hit the floor running, you know. You, you can't afford to sign a player that's going to be ready by the end of March, let's say, you know. Because you're replacing a yeah. player and and you need you need them to make a direct impact, you know. But well, look, anyway, we're at this we're at this stage now where you okay, if we were losing games and drawing games, we'd be saying we need more signings, we need more signings, like we were a few weeks yeah. ago, right? Now we're winning games. The question is, if we do bring in more players, first of all, players need to leave, right? And as I was saying, only four signings in and out are allowed. Yeah, yeah. So. No one's uh, Matavs has gone. Yeah. He's officially joined a club in Croatia, so he's out yeah. the door, right? So that frees up a spot, but that means we've already brought in um, Ishmael. Yeah. Right. So one's gone, one's come in. So three can leave, three can come in, right? If you're talking about Francis possibly leaving, Barker possibly. I, I I don't I don't I don't see this urgency to bring in players for the sake of bringing players in. Right. I don't see that necessity. But as I said at the beginning of the season, we still need another central defender. And I still stick by that. Okay, We still need another centre-back. You could argue we need another centre-forward. But as we've seen recently, the way that Karim is playing, dropping deep in that number 10 role, he was fantastic today. Like We didn't mention him. He was absolutely sublime as far as I'm concerned. Um but we do. I, I still think we need a central defender and possibly a striker to fill in the shoes of, of, of Mataz. But in January, with the window being tight at the moment, we're, what, second week of January? There's another, what, uh, 15 days, 14 days left? Yeah. Right? It doesn't look likely we're going to bring someone in at the moment, the way that things are. It doesn't look likely. Now, if we don't win the league and if we don't win the cup and if we don't qualify for Europe, Balemedin Guvenda, we should have brought someone else in in January. Now, them lot have gone and signed a baller. Right? I know he's 33 years old, but he's quality. That player that they brought in from, from Red Star. Ben. That ben. ben. Yeah, I used to watch him when he was in Pani, when he was in Olympia. He can make a difference. And this is scary because he's a difference maker. Honestly, I've seen this guy play on and off the ball from set pieces as well. That left foot, right foot, he can deliver crosses. Oh, he's a good player. He's, he's a good player. He'll smash the granny out of this league, I'm telling you. If if he remains uh, injury-free and he um, he hits the ground running, uh, that's very scary. But look, this is a message. Oh, sorry, I want to clear the thing up. You know, we we have one, one free spot, so we don't have to replace one player. You know, it's not four out, four in. But uh, when Simos came on Total Green, he said that even though we have a free spot, because the Xenia Biambu de Gavendes plus de Gaeftan is Hamed de Gaex. So, for example, Jrandi came in without any player leaving. Okay. Because when we signed Jrandi, Matavs was still a player of Ammonia. But now it's. The, uh, Simo said we, we we don't want to use the 17 spots we have. We as Omonia want to play ship football players. So, we don't care if we've got one. So, if we want, for example, for the sake of the conversation, if we want to bring in four players, we don't have to bring in four players. We have one spot. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we need to touch on in terms of the, the, the performance. Someone asked earlier, MVPs, you said Kasama. That's what I was going to say because you mentioned uh, Kareem and I mentioned a bit about Kasama. I think let's just say who's our MVP and, and try and wrap it up, man. You're sticking with Kasama, yeah? Uh, no. Uh, I stick with Kasama. Yeah, I think yeah, I think Kasama. Uh, we we can talk individually about every player if you want, but for me, um, I think Kasama was uh, had his 
I'm trying to think. I think in some European games he was he was really good as well. But uh, as far as the league games, I think today was uh, probably his his best game. He was everywhere. He would uh, win fouls. He was uh, aggressive. He would uh, fight for the ball. Okay, some some people say that he avoids being a bit more direct. They like him to be a bit more direct and και να πασάρει σκύπτο μπροστά, συνήθως πασάρει παράλληλα ή πίσω και όχι τόσο πολλά μπροστά. Νομίζω είχε διάθεση σήμερα να παίξει και πιο γλυόρα με μπάλαν και να κινηθεί, ήταν σε όλους τους χώρους, εκάλυψε τους χώρους. Δηλαδή συνήθως είναι ο Πάσ που το κάνει το πράγμα, σήμερα κάνει το ο Κασάμα και για μένα ήταν ο MVP. Ο Πάρης πάλε φανταστικ. Paris was fantastic. Ofotis or Gitsos Pale, Ibamen, he he had some trouble with uh, Santos. Not really, to be honest, but you know, he had better games. But uh, as the game grew, I think he 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 was better, especially the second half as well. But he wasn't bad, he could have scored a goal. Uh Miletic was, I think, the better out of the two defenders. Uh happy birthday. Ne, happy birthday, Nema. Happy birthday. Yeah, and um, okay, Lang Lang was made a couple of mistakes, but overall, he was good. Okay. Look, I, I'm, was not, good. I'm not saying he had a bad game. Um, I think him and him Militage were good. They were they were very good. But again, the, there's a couple of mistakes which, all right, okay, I, I just magnify things too much, and I don't, you know, really give people the benefit of the doubt. You know, I mean, look, I could. I could say that, you know, Lesiak's has been pretty bad. That's why he lost his spot. But today, when he came on, he showed urgency. He showed aggression. And there's something I noticed about Lesiak's today. Every time he got the ball on the left-hand side, he was always looking to whip it first time. Always. There's one or two occasions where he didn't. But it's almost as if his instructions were, get that ball. The moment you get that ball on that left foot, whip it. Whip it. Because it causes problems. And I think that was the problem with him before getting forward. He was, he was very reluctant to put the ball in the box. Whereas it almost it seemed as if his instructions were get that ball, whip it. Mm. So anyway, anyway. Anyway, in like in the middle of the park, Bash and um, and Kasama cleaned up shop quite well. I think we, we won the midfield battle. Uh, like I said, so Kasama for me is MVP. Bruno got the goal again. I saw that he's trying to be a lot more tactical with Yannick on the bench. Before he had a more free role, he was a bit more, you know, didn't have a lot of discipline, uh, whether that was, you know, um, he was playing a bit more selfishly, you know, but now he's yeah. he's become more a team player. He, again, there was a point where he, he lost the ball and he tracked the player back like 30, 40 yards uh, and yeah. he won the ball and we see more of that. So uh, I like what I'm seeing from Bruno. There was one. There was one moment where the ball's gone out for a throw. Yanevsky's yeah. throwing it back on the pitch, and Bruno's punched it away, right? And I saw him do that to Yanevsky. He's like, "Yeah, whatever. It is what it is, man. Take it like a man." Yeah. <laughs> right. um, okay, Barker tried, but I I think today wasn't um, same standard as previous games. I'm not going to say he was bad. Right, but... There was some. There was some moments where Barker got the ball. And I, I thought he's going to try and run at the defender, but that pitch looked really slippery. And again, this isn't me being negative or anything. I just get the feeling that in the back of his mind, subconsciously, he was worried about pulling up with a hammy because that pitch wasn't good for him. It weren't good. There was a couple of moments I thought he's going to... And I saw him slipping a bit. I thought, ah... Uh, there, was a, there was a message I saw for... Uh, I think it was the beginning of the show. He looked like Bambi on ice. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, you can, you can, you can say that. You can say that. I, I think he he would admit that he it wasn't his better games. But did he really put a foot wrong though? Because I didn't see any like wayward passes. I saw him give it. He's improved a lot, man. Yeah, he's but he wasn't. He wasn't involved in any of no. the you know, previous games. He he got a goal. He got assists. He got closer to scoring another goal. The defense felt him a bit more today. Okay, he he. He didn't do something really wrong, but he wasn't as didn't have any impact on the game per se. And I think you know, him mm -hmm. being the first uh, Alai was also 
because of that as well. Maybe it was to protect him as well, you know, but uh, okay, let's not get carried away. Mm. Okay, Kareem, Kareem, I think Ando Ibelo Simera Idanga Literon or Karimidan Nabexi, even Bolinorex in Nabexi. Yeah, people chuck back, but to Ibelo and Donego, he said. Yeah. And Bolles Forest, you know, he, he flicks one touch, even the. He was involved in the goal we scored. Din Efkerian to to Gitsu. Yep. When he put in a Iris Eston Gitsu. So the, there was yeah. one where he's, he's flicked it around the corner on the edge of the box for Gagu Lee. And Gagu yeah. hesitated and the ball got yeah. stuck in the in the mud. Yeah. And then he could he could have uh, he could have run onto it if he gambled. So this is this is the other thing, right? Gagu needs to gamble more. He needs yeah. to gamble more because any loose ball in that box. All right, anyway, so I, I, I love Gagu, so I'm not going to keep going on about the guy, but, you know. Okay, and then Gagu, okay, again, uh, we're getting, we see the constant improvement uh, with Gagu. Even in his mistakes, he's improving because he's doing things that he wouldn't have done before. He gave an assist, he got stuck in, he got a goal that was disallowed. The penalty, whether it was or not, we didn't speak about the run, how he, he won the ball and he and he managed to... I don't think any other player on the pitch could have done what Gagu did, whether it's a penalty or not. You know, he stole the ball. But yeah, um, I'm very happy with Gagu as well. Jan, it was good to see Jan again. The other players who came on, the subs, I think... You can't really judge them because they no, was no. on the 87th minute. You know, didn't really get involved much in the game. Hooper too. was all right. Hooper was all right. Hooper came. There's, Hooper came there's on one a, moment. A there, yeah. there's, there was one moment where Miralas got the ball down their left hand side, yeah. and he stood, he stood he stood off him, but he stood him up as well. And he's like, right, come on, try and beat me. And he yeah, couldn't beat him. Ball down for a throw. So he stood him up. So no, that's experience. That's experience, though, bro. That's experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Bravo, Hooper as well. But yeah, so I think that's about it. Repro move done just under an hour. We're going to wrap it up about yeah. an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, my MVP, I'm going to give it to Bash. And I'll tell you why. Yeah. For me, as I said earlier, the, the two main threats on the field for them were Miralas and Chibola. And Chibola really saw much of the ball, especially in our half. I know he had that, that shot which went over, but Bash kept him quiet. And th there's there's uh, trigger points, as they call them, when it comes to pressing. And you, you see it in, in certain elements of the game. So, for example, in the first half, when we got the ball round about the halfway line, that's when I would press. Second half, when the ball went to Militic, that's when they would press. But whenever the ball went close to Jibola, that is when Bash got stuck in and pressed. But he did it at the right time. He was fair with his challenges. I don't think... I think he may have given away one or two free kicks, but these are fouls on other players. And the yeah. fact that I know Chibola went off injured, I understand. But the fact that he kept him quiet, and this player, as I keep telling you, boys and girls, he is a fucking baller, this Chibola. Honestly, if you don't watch IL, watch them just for him. And I'll be very worried if he joins any other team in, in the Brothers. Where did they sign him from? He was from a Turkish team. Okay. But before that, he was at Kilmarnock, but he was at Aston Villa's academy, man. And now he's at Reading, and they went to Aston Villa. He's a good player, man. He's a very good player. Very good player. So, yeah. Anyway. Okay, I'm going to just put up this message because, you know... Also, if this is your only one, I'm very happy to have a little bit of time to give you a little bit of time to give you a little bit of time to give you a little bit of time. So, Hambo is a dramatic man. Η αλήθεια είναι ότι τον Παναγιώ τους και τον Μίξ τυχνήραμε τους πρότιμα. Ε, συμφωνώ μαζί σου, Κωνσταντίνο, ότι ε, ενώ ο προπονητής δείχνει να, να βελτιώνει την κατάσταση, ε, πρέπει να γίνεται και λίγο πιο δίκαιος με κάποιους παίχτες που, που πρέπει να έχουν ευκαιρίες. Συμφωνώ μαζί σου, απλά του, του, τον, το, του τον ήθελα να πω για το comment του τον. Anyway, ε, shall we wrap it up? Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Is there anything? Is there anything else you'd like to discuss? I think we covered almost. We spoke about the game against Salamina. We, you know, there's spoke about Francis, the press conference, the game, the goal. Well, so, someone mentioned the sporting director earlier, and that, that's another 
some that's another thing that we know absolutely nothing about. There was a, a story, was it last week, that they whittled it down to three, and one of them's got experience in various. I, I don't know. Again, these are these are stories that are leaked in the press. As we know, the club are very tight-lipped yeah. with things like this, and the announcement will probably come out of the blue when we least expect it. So I'm not I'm not uh you know, hanging my hopes on a certain appointment. Whoever it is has to be the right appointment, and I'm pretty sure that they're going to be stringent with it. Yeah. So let's see. Let's see. I hope yeah. it's who I think it is, but here's the hoping. Yeah, let's wait and see. Yeah. Anyway, let's go. The last thing I'm going to say is that I'm going to say 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 Προφανώς και δεν είναι κάτι να πανηγυρίζεις το ότι είσαι στην τέταρτη θέση δέκα βαθμούς που την κορυφή. Δηλαδή ας σωραλούσε κάποιος ότι Γενάρη μήνα να είσαι δέκα πόντους πίσω που την κορυφή με τρεις ομάδες μπροστά σου θα είσαι κανένα που ήταν να χαιρέται. Αλλά ευτυχώς ή δυστυχώς γίνεται μια νέα προσπάθεια, τιμία βλέπουμε κάποια χαρακτηριστικά να μπαίνουν στο παιχνίδι μας και υπάρχει βελτίωση και ας ελπίσουμε ότι είναι να συνεχιστεί είχαμε πει ότι πρέπει να βλέπουμε το κάθε παιχνίδι ξεχωριστά έχουμε ακόμα ένα παιχνίδι θεωρητικά χωρίς να λέω ότι είναι εύκολο ήταν μέσα σε μια τετράδα παιχνιδικών που είπαμε ότι μπορεί να τα κερδίσουμε έτσι ώστε να φέρουμε τα παιχνίδια με τους προπορεγόμενους να είναι παιχνίδια έξι βαθμών, όπως αυτό με υπάρχει. Όπως είπα, κερδίσαμε την ΑΕΛ, μια δύσκολο κατάβλη την ομάδα, μια σοβαρή, καλά οργανωμένη ομάδα, πολλά καλή τακτικά με καλό προπονητή. Οπότε το επόμενο μας μάτς με τη Σαλαμίνα θα πρέπει και γύρω να κερδίσουμε για να μπορούσουμε να πάμε και να κυνηγήσουμε, να πάμε όλοι στα παιχνίδια τα άλλα που είναι να συσπάφουν, άριν, από ελ και τα λοιπά. Μέχρι τότε συνεχίζει η προσπάθεια στήριξη τη ομάδα και πάμε στη λακκά μου. And don't forget, get on that like, veranda of yours. Like. Like, subscribe, tell your nuna. Get on that veranda. And yell at the top of your voice. Eh, Horiani, Horiani. Fuck, Androbi. There you go.